Welcome everybody to the MATLAB part of wireless communication system, modeling communication systems, transmitter, receiver, and the channel. So last time we discussed about the different types of multipath fading channels. We discussed about path loss, slow fading, fast fading. After we got the example of simulating a communication system over an additive white Gaussian noise, and we gave you this example, MATLAB example, and we said you can implement it in MATLAB and get the results as you see in this figure. And we experimented with one of the students, and we showed you how to play with the code, how to make it run fast, how to detect the errors, how to correct them, where to insert the codes, and even we extended the code to uh, slow fading channels. So path loss, we said the reason of the path loss is the distance between the transmitter and receiver and it depends also in the environment where alpha affects that as well. It, 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 it has some direct relationship with the antenna height, with the frequency, with the building, with the trees, with the environment and geometry around you. And we briefly explained that slow fading, or what we call a small scale fading, which is the fading due to receiving so many signals at the same time due to reflection from the environment. So in that, due to this, you have a fluctuation in the signals. The signal can be up and down, up and down, uh, within the within half wavelength of the that where the channels changes significantly if the distance between the receivers or the location of two receiving points is larger than lambda over two, which we call it the decorrelation uh, distance. And we talked about uh, the, the fading due to Doppler. When you move with the car, what happens? You create Doppler, the frequency changes, there is a frequency shift and discuss the two path model where the signal you transmitted gets reflected of two main objects until it reaches the receiver and you have two different delays with two different amplitudes but it's not just one signal it's a bunch of rays too many rays and each ray uh, constitute like a tab one tab model two tab models so you have here l path model and as you can see here, there is no line of sight between the transmitter and receiver, and you receive all the signals from all the directions, and there is no main component of line of sight. Think of this uh, green, think of this green point like the receiver, and the other ones are the uh, the, the rays. You receive them from all the directions. So we also explained brief in details the Rayleigh fading model and we said the channel H is a complex, we model it as a complex number. You have I in phase and the quadrature, the in phase component is modeled as complex Gaussian noise distribution, complex Gaussian uh, nor normal distribution. And uh, the zero represents the mean of the Gaussian distribution, and sigma square represents the variance. And we we all know how to write the distribution of Gaussian. It's exponential of minus u minus sigma square over square root of two sigma square. You multiply it by one over square root of two by sigma square. The distribution of, you can get from the internet or from text boxes. Very famous. Now, what, where is the point? When you have the in phase and the quadrature, they are drawn from normal Gaussian distribution with zero mean and variance sigma square, and you want to find the distribution of the amplitude value of h of t, you take the square root of h i square plus square uh, plus uh, square of h q of t, and you if you find it and you draw the distribution using MATLAB of these values, you will find out that the distribution is fitting to Rayleigh. And we said Rayleigh, Rayleigh is a different type of distribution that that's close to Gaussian, normal Gaussian distribution, but it's kind of, it's not symmetric as Gaussian. It has some 
skew in it in 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 some of the parts so the probability the bdf of that distribution is equal x uh, my the probability of x is equal to x over sigma square multiplied by exponential to minus x square over two sigma square where x is greater than or equal zero and the beautiful thing uh, the, there is one point i want to mention about this is the fact that really is a, a, a first they found it from empirical measurements you know the empirical measurements you don't find it by math you find it by measurements you go you and your friend you go to the field and you start sending signal and receiving it and you record the signal in different position you send and receive you you record like sequence of uh, symbols you receive like let's say you record 10, 10 giga byte of uh, data uh, received uh, received signals which which are basically complex values at the end of the day you go to matlab and you try to fit these data fit them to a distribution parameter you find uh, they have certain shape let's say certain shape this shape they name it really uh, after the city really in california so really is a name of a city in california and since the researchers uh, who were make who were making the experiment there in Rayleigh, and they found out the distribution to be uh, close to certain parameter, they gave the name of the city to the shape of the distribution. And since then, people started naming this distribution with respect to the name of the city in California, USA, Rayleigh. So this is the name of a city, and the distribution is named after it. Uh, so the Rayleigh distribution, as you can see, is here in this figure. It's not similar to Gaussian. It's a little, it's different a little bit. Yes, it's completely different, not similar to Gaussian. But Gaussian is basically symmetric. For example, sigma here, sigma is equal uh, 0.5. Yes, when you change sigma, increase sigma, the the curve a little bit tends to be fatter. The distribution becomes fatter and you shift to the uh, left you shift to the right more and the, the distribution is this you see the variance the variance increases as you increase sigma obviously the variance increases the variance increases the variance increases here lowest sigma lowest variance so here uh, we also talked about how to model uh, siso single input single output transmission over a really fading channel so we we said we have we assume that we have discrete memoryless linear channel where you have your received signal u you estimated u of k is equal to the channel multiplied by the information symbol plus the noise this is the system model think of that this equation this simple equation has meaning the, this u of k means this is the data that you want to transmit. h of k is the effect of the channel on your data. n of k is the noise added to your data, and this is what you receive, u half of k. So uh, h, here the h of k is drawn from normal complex Gaussian distribution. And the data here can be uniformly distributed, and the noise also normal Gaussian distributed with zero mean and variance sigma square n. Receiver has uh, the channel state information because the receiver needs to. What's the job of the receiver? You you transmitted the transmitter sends this data. The data gets affected by the channel and noise the job of the receiver is to be able to detect why u of t u of k from the noisy version of the received signal so to do that you need to perform a process called equalization equalization is kind of trying to remove the effect of the channel how do you remove the effect of the channel mathematically if i tell you remove the effect of the channel what would you do you just tell me oh, Hujama, you just can just divide by h of k, yes? When you divide by h of k, kind of you remove the effect of the channel, direct effect of the channel on u of, on u of k, but the effect of the channel is shifted to n of k. 
where now n of k is divided by the channel. So you, if if your if your channel value is really low, very low, let's say due to fade, fading, deep fading, you are behind the room or behind the building. Due to deep fading, your channel value is so small. So in this case, when you divide the noise value over the channel value, which is very small, you get very large value. And we call this noise enhancement. Noise enhancement means you, you are enhancing and amplifying and boosting the power of the noise due to dividing by the channel amplitude. Why do we experience this? Because of deep fading. How to solve this? Don't transmit over these deep faded subchannels. So this is what we do usually. And this is the receiver has. So basically here, when you multiply the, your received signal with H conjugate, it's similar to dividing by H. You can test it. And we also uh, simulated this using MATLAB. Yes, very easy, very straightforward, not difficult. We know these functions, the modulation, the data, the SNR, the PSK. I assume everybody tested this at home. Yes, if you don't test this, you you will have so many problems in the uh, in implementing advanced communication schemes because these are the most basic fundamental ones. These are we call these are we call these examples uh, kid example kid examples. Yeah, I mean, just for kids, for to just get you started in the system, in the MATLAB modeling, how to write communication uh, in files for simulating your system. So, and this is very useful and helpful because sometimes you might come up with an idea while you are in, in your way to school, to home, you are just thinking, thinking to improve the system and you come up with an idea. To, the way to verify whether your idea is valid or not is to go to MATLAB and simulate it. And once you simulate it and you get the results, you see whether your idea is really uh, improving the performance as you expected or it's really disappointing you and not providing you the gain that you were anticipating. And therefore, learning MATLAB, learning how to code, learning how to simulate and model your communication system mathematically and then go to MATLAB environment and code it and simulate it is very important, very critical and significant in understanding the whole picture of communication and in implementing and understanding your ideas and techniques and methods. So the two path model with line of sight. Yes, I assume everybody tested this and got the results right as we did in last lecture. Now let's go to the two path model with line of sight where you have one. Uh, you have both line of sight and non line of sight line of sight LOS is where the transmitter and receiver see each other. Yes, they see each other. They have direct uh, view. They have direct observation. While the reflection is coming from the signals that that gets reflected off certain objects and then get to the receiver. Now, of course, obviously, the direct path reaches the receiver faster and before the other paths. So, the, this path reaches after a certain period of time and therefore there is certain delay. So path one, you get delay, your signal reaches at T0 and we call it line of sight and the amplitude is C0. So each path here has certain amplitude and certain delay. And when you have L path model, you have too many uh, paths coming from different objects reflecting the signal and you have line of sight. So we have this model, yes? We have one receiver receiving strong signal from line of sight. There is line of sight, but also there are other signals that you receive from the surrounding. This is the building. This is another building. This is a bridge, for example. This is home. This is mountain, whatever the signal hits and reflected, hits and get reflected. And you have so many signals reaching the black one. These are from reflections and the red one from line of sight, direct line of sight. You remember this example here? Here, really, we have l path model, but this is really, there is no line of sight. All the signals are reaching the receiver from reflectors, from objects reflecting each other. So here, 
here this is very very tricky very important thing uh, after you want to model this once you have this model you want to find the mathematical distribution of this phenomenon so you come here if you assume that you have a large number of scatterers reflectors and the line of sight we get a mean value at the receiver which is larger than zero yes mean value large, larger than zero why because we have line of sight in case of rarely fading channel we didn't have line of sight and therefore the mean was zero with certain variance now here in ration this is another type of this fading distribution we call it ration this is due to the fact that we have line of sight suppose you are when you talk with your phone when you use your phone and you are in front of the tower when you are facing the tower, you are not inside a building or inside car or inside uh, something that you don't see the tower. In this case, most probably you will not be seeing or experiencing really fading channel. Instead, you will experience ration channel. So, some people pro pronounce, this, pronounce this word as ration, some they pronounce it as ration. So both are used in the literature. You can use whatever you want, but you, whenever you hear it, you understand that there is line of sight component. So here, here you go. You model the channel the same way you did with the really fading channel. You have the the channel edge that is which is which which is one tab and cons uh, consisting of so many rays reaching your receiver at the same time uh, is modeled as a complex value and this complex value has in phase and the quadrature and when you uh, when you model it you will find it that h has gaussian normal distribution with not with zero mean with c mean and this mean is due to the line of sight uh, line of sight direction and also hi hq they have normal distribution so you have normal distribution here which is gaussian and here gaussian normal distribution with certain mean and certain variance so now you want to find the distribution of the amplitude. How do you find the amplitude of the channel? Square root of hi square plus hq square. Yes. So absolute value of h of t is now has different distribution. We call it ration distribution. What's the formula of that? It's this. Do you need to memorize it? No, you don't need. It's just available on the literature, available in Wikipedia, available on the internet. But you need to know how to use it and know its meaning and what does it mean. So here, sigma, sigma square is the variance of your channel. C is the line of sight, the mean, and X is the, uh, the, the amplitude of your received signal. And this I0 is a function, we call it modified Bessel function of first kind and zero order. Okay, now you know, for example, if I if I ask you to model the channel in Antalya, model it, find the distribution of how you receive your signal, for example, around the university, in the city, in different areas of Antalya, what do you do? You just take two USRBs from the, we give you two USRBs from the communication lab, and we teach you how to transmit a signal and receive it, uh, it's very easy setup. You just need to connect the USRB with your laptop and uh, open the MATLAB, connect them from the MATLAB or LabVIEW, view, and the signal you simulated here, put it in your code, the codes I told you, and send them to the USRB. The USRB sends, and your friend, for example, one kilometer away from you, receive, receives the signal and record it in MATLAB. Receive and record at different positions until you get like one giga of data and then you go to the MATLAB and say let's uh, fit this data let's find the distribution of this data how does it look like and you find out that it has certain distribution you start now after you get the distribution you start finding 
which distribution is closest to this data. And you find out that it's maybe ration. Uh, you, you, of course, you draw ration and see how close it is to ration. You draw really and you see how close it is to really. And you, you come up to the conclusion that I, we did this test, we modeled the channel, we transmitted, we received the signal, and we found out that our channel is nor is is neither ration nor really. It's in between. What do you mean in between? Yes, it's in between. This environment here in Antalya completely different than the environment in Raleigh in California, USA. And we noticed there are some differences. It's fine, it's okay, you are right, yes, it might be because it's, it totally depends on the geometry of your environment. But you know the process, and you tell me we found out the variance to be this value, the mean to be this value, and the function. You can use the ratio, but uh, the, 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 general, the general shape is different. So here is the, the, the model that you will show in the MATLAB. For different line of sight parameters, you, you get different shapes, you di get different distributions. Yes, which one is better? Which one is better? Which one is best? This one, uh, you, you, sh you should tell me, based on what, which one is better? You tell me. Based on what? I, I tell you based on the signal to noise ratio, based on the quality, the strength of your received signal. Which care is the best among all of these? Which distribution is the best? Can you tell me? In the in the chat, in the chat room, just tell me quickly which one is the best you think? I think I think let me think. Let me think like you. So you are asking us about which one of these distribution is the best in terms of signal quality. So when do I get very good signal quality, very high signal to noise ratio and all the bars are high? My internet uh, signal is very good. When I am close to the access point, when I am close to the base station, which means when I am having line of sight, of uh, line of sight view. So where is the one that has line of sight? The one that has larger sigma, uh, the, the, one, the one that has larger amplitude values. Here, this is the value, the amplitude of the signal, which you can think of it like the power. As you can see here for this curve, for the purple one, the power starts from 1.5, where the others, they start from zero. So in this purple one, I never get zero. I never get 0 0.5. I never get one. I am always above 1.5 amplitude power, which means that the received signal is always good, is always nice. And this, I noticed that the variance of this is large also which is equal to this, then this means that this is the best care that I can get. My amplitude, the power of my received signal can reach as large as A as 7, 8, which is absolutely awesome, high quality, high signal power. Your internet speed is super, is awesome, like super P. You cannot get better than this. And that's how you interpret these cares. That's how you can say, how you can tell that this is good, this is not good, this is better, this is in between. So ration, which, so in general, which channel is better to ration or really? So of course, obvious, really, uh, ration is better, really is worse. Why? Because really is usually starts from zero, the amplitude of the signal. So here, this curve shows you what's the probability of receiving a signal with power or amplitude 4. It's here, what? It's uh, 0.4. Uh, the probability of receiving a signal with, with power, for example, for this, for uh, the black curve, 
what's the probability of receiving your signal with power larger than four? Therefore, this is four. Everybody with me, this is four. Go up until you hit the black curve. Once you hit the black curve and go to the horizontal, you see that the probability is almost 0.0 or something like near zero. Let's say it's 0.04. Uh, it's almost near zero. But uh, this is the probability. But when you go, this is the probability of receiving your signal with power greater than four. But for this red one, What's the probability of receiving your signal with power over 4? The probability is greater than 0.1. For this purple one, the probability is 0.4. Half of your received paths are having probability more than 0.4, which is absolutely stunning. We like that. We have very high good signal to noise ratio. Nice quality, nice signal quality, high speed internet. We don't experience any delay. You see how amazing our communication video is going because you are line of sight with your access point. Now we try to go behind the access point. We try to go several rooms away from the access point and see how your connection will degrade and your your because your channel changed. Your channel now became completely different. Now it's turning from line of sight ratio to started becoming from the, when you are close to the access point and you are sitting in the same room of the Wi-Fi access point, most probably you are getting something like this. But when you go away to another room and you are far from the access point by let's say three, four, five rooms, you don't see that, you don't have line of sight with the access point. You, the signal you, the internet signal you receive is coming from the reflections of from the objects, and therefore you 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 start seeing something like Rayleigh, and even worse than the Rayleigh, sometimes you see something like this until you lose your connection. Sometimes but now now once you understand how to interpret these curves and how to deal them, how to see which one is better, you have full understanding and of connecting the theory the curves, the distributions, the mathematical model with the practice, with the environment. You have, can now interpret why the signal is good or bad or what. Yes? So I know it's theory, but it's practice also. You just get, this is the signal. This is the received signal. Let's again summarize the, uh, the three main effects that you get when you are receiving your wire, signal wirelessly. You have the bad loss, which is loss in the power, significant loss in the power of your signal due to distance. So when you go far from the base station, definitely you are going to lose a significant amount of power. The farther you go, the less the power you will receive. The, the, second, the second effect due to channel is shadowing. What's shadowing? You are going far from the base station, but while you are going farther from the base station, there is a building also between you and the base station, let's say. And the signal needs now to penetrate through the building until it reaches you. Now this will cause sudden, sudden degradation and sudden flow, sudden fall in your received signal power. And fast fading is due to the some the the the, the multi-path reflections coming from the non-line of sight environment and the objects around you that are reflecting so many signals and all of them reaching at your side simultaneously. So if they reach at your side simultaneously and they add up to each other, they have the same phase or they reach with the same phase angle, then you will get amplification your uh, your signal will get improved but if your signal is your all these paths are added destructively which means they are with different phases you might get very bad quality this happens although even when you are very close to the base station if you are if you don't know how to deal with it you might face problems due to it so here is another curve that combine all of them together. So this straight line 
shows the path loss. This is due to path loss. This is distance. This is signal level. Think of that that the power or the the Wi-Fi signal uh, symbol. So this is line of sight. This is the slope, and this this is basically the second one. The this one, the dotted one, the dashed one is the is the one due to shadowing due to having some blockage, some buildings in between the transmitter and receiver. And the, this fast one, we call it uh, fast fading due to the multipath reflections. OK, now you are expert in wireless communication. You are expert in signal, uh, analyzing the signal. And you know how to relate this to practice, yes? You know how to relate this to practice, I believe. All of you knows how to relate this to practice now, yes? It's not that difficult, but once you connect them with each other, you get very nice, full, complete understanding of this. So, what other types of channel effects we have? We have also frequency selective, time domain. How, when do we get this? When do we get this frequency selective? Can you tell me when do we get this frequency selective? I will tell you. I will tell you. Let me open this marker and draw to you one example where you can receive frequency selective. So this is a frequency selective. Think of it. Is it happens due to multipath? But where is the trick here? The trick when you want to increase your simple rate, your data rate, your internet speed. You you ask and you say I want very high data rate. I don't I one mega two mega is not enough. I want a speed of one gigabit per second. If you can send me please. So what you do, you just try to to send your signal with this data rate, and here is the problem. When you send with this data rate, what happens to your uh, switch at the transmitter? It works very quickly. It needs to transmit so many symbols back to back. Now, when you transmit so many symbols back to back and the signal has uh, has or already the channel has certain uh, pro propagation properties and it has certain delay it can cause to your symbol. So when you send the symbol very fast, it what happens that the signal the, the channel affects your signal like this way and makes it interfere with the next adjacent symbol. So this is interference between them. We call it inter-symbol interference due to the channel, of course, because the channel has so many multipaths and these multipaths are, are coming from objects which are really far from your receiver and it takes a lo longer period of time until it reaches the receiver, until you complete the transmission of one symbol. And this causes this problem of inter-symbol interference. So this is, we call it channel with memory, because you transmitted, you transmitted this, you received this memory. This is memory. This is delay. And this, this causes also inter-symbol interference because the symbols are in, uh, entering to each other. We call this frequency selective channel channel with memory. Now, frequency flat fading channel, memoryless channel, the, the channel does not cause memory, does not cause too much dispersion to your symbol. Why? Because there is no rich multipath and there is no large, ref, uh, very far reflectors. Okay. Now, this is in time domain. When you go to the frequency domain, you notice that the coherence bandwidth, we call the, it's a coherence bandwidth is a parameter we use to characterize the frequency selectivity of the channel. The coherence bandwidth of the channel, which is, you think of that like the, the, the bandwidth over which the channel is not changing significantly. So this is the coherence bandwidth. The channel here within this is not changing too much, but when you go up, down, 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 and suddenly go up, then the channel changes significantly from up and down, down, or up. And therefore, this is the bandwidth of your signal, and this is the coherence bandwidth. When the bandwidth of your symbol is greater than the coherence bandwidth, we call the channel is frequency selective. 
while when the bandwidth of when the coherence bandwidth of your channel is greater than the bandwidth of your symbol, we call it a flat fading. Flat fading frequency non-selective. Okay, this is another important phenomenon and characteristics that we experience in wireless fading channel. Now, how do you model that? How do you model that? How do you simulate this? How do you write it mathematically if you want to write a paper? If you want to write a report related to a frequency selective channel, the transmission, the transmissions, or the transmission of wireless signals over frequency selective channel. So what do you do? You model this using using something we call it discrete model. Yes, H of K. You 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 write uh, you write the channel H H T T is continuous and T capital is the uh, sample instant. You model it as a discrete model and you name it as H of K. K is the time instant, okay, and it's related to T small multiplied by T capital. Why and this is for the channel. Y of K is the received signal. The received signal at time instant K. S is the transmitted symbol at time instant K. N is the noise sample at time instant K. So when you have multiple paths, yes. So when you have multiple multi path channel where you you receive your signal from over different time instances. Yes, you transmit here, you transmit. This is your transmitted pulse at the transmitter, but unfortunately at the receiver, what happens at the receiver? At the receiver, instead of receiving only one, you receive the first one, which is line of sight, and you receive then another one from certain reflection, and another one from another reflection, another one from another, another one. So this causes delay. This causes dispersion in your channel. We call it memory. Now this, this L0, let's say L0, L1, L2, L3, L4. So let's say L is equal to four or five. Then you, the received symbol Y of K is equal to the summation of all these paths multiplied by the signal that comes with them multiplied by the channel plus noise. So this, this, this is coming to from here. Now you can, what's P, PS? P, PS is the power of your symbol. You take square root. Why square root? Because when we model, we model in amplitude, not in power. Okay, square root and then S of K minus L, HL plus N of K. And you can also denote this by vector notation. How, what do you do in vector notation? You, you, put, you say that the received symbol uh, y is equal to square root of P, PS multiplied by H. H is vector now. What's H? H is these values. H, H is equal to these values. Let's say this is H0, H0, and this H1, and this H2, and this H3. And H4, so you have vi you have vector at the end of the day. You put it here in, in the mathematical equation. And this vector is multiplied by the symbol you transmit, one single symbol, plus noise to receive your data. So this equation is very important. You will model it in MATLAB. Okay, you model the channel as a vector, complex vector. And S is complex value, square root of PS is one real value, and N is complex sample drawn from normal Gaussian distribution, and Y, y is the received signal. And here H SISO is given as follows, and this is the symbol. So you got it. This is how to model it in MATLAB. Very important example of how to model it in MATLAB. 
in in uh, and the way you you see this uh, if you want to implement this using a circuit this signal using a circuit it looks like this you have your symbol you multiply it by h0 after certain delay you multiply it by h1 after two delay you multiply it by h2 after you multiply it by h3 so this you you uh, how do you think of that like this this is this h0 is the one coming from line of sight here you have the transmitter and here you have the receiver and this line of sight component gives you h0 so your signal s is multiplied by h0 now your signal also can come here and reflect and hit something and get reflected of that what do we call this we call this H1 after a delay. This signal reaches after a delay. So H0, now your signal here, H1 multiplied by S. So you now you, the summation here, S multiplied by H0 plus S multiplied by H1. After another delay, let's say you went too farther, the distance went farther, and hit another object and get reflected of it. And we call it after P3. So at the end of the day, you sum all of them together. They are added, summed, and you you put noise to them. The noise is always added to them, and then this is your received vector uh, y. And this is the mathematical model that we already explained. Frequency flat fading, size so we get the flat fading channel model if the channel has no memory. If the channel has no memory, we get flat fading. Flat fading means only one value of the channel, H. This we call it frequency selective. When L is equal to one, this can be uh, turned out to be non uh, flat fading channel, no selectivity, and it can be modeled like this. Flat fading means that we just have the multi we, we just have to multiply the symbol S with one complex random variable H. Thus, therefore, the channel is described with just one complex number. MATLAB example is given on, on slide flat fading really in MATLAB. So I want you now, we can, we can stop here for now. And I want all of you to go to MATLAB. This is kind of uh, simple practice you make you, you can do it at home exercise model model this using MATLAB go to the help library library of MATLAB and write this frequency selective or multi path multi path and example of how to simulate it I just want you to look at it and see how the system is being simulated and run it and see the effect of that and change the parameters at the length of the channel instead of two instead of for example first put 10 parameters then reduce it to eight 10 to five then to two then to three then to one and see the effect of that in the bit error rate in the time it takes to get give you the result the delay the complexity and trace the code and see how the channel is you can convert it and play with it and convert it from frequency selective to flat fading Okay, this is your task. So we can stop here for now, and I'm expecting you to do this, to prepare this task as soon as possible, because it's going to be a very important one. And we can, in next lecture, I am going to ask you to share with me your screen one by one and show me what you did. How did you, what did you do in MATLAB? Where did you find it in the MATLAB library? and which examples you opened and run and which parameters you which parameters you have changed in order to get the expected performance okay so we now we stop here next lecture we are going to listen to your uh, experiments and what you did in matlab and uh, related to multipath and frequency selective channel and uh, I just want to see the modulation, the simulation of uh, a communication system over a frequency selective fading channel. Okay, and if you don't find, let me know, send me an email. I tried, I couldn't find, uh, and I need help so that I can guide you. Okay, if you don't send, I assume you, you, you found it. 
just you need to search on it on the MATLAB library. It's there. Just search on help and documentation. You will find it. Just learn it and uh, play with it. OK, make, make sure you are uh, comfortable with it. OK, so we can stop here and continue next lecture. OK, thank you very much. And uh, stay placed and take care of yourself. Salaamu Alaikum.